Good morning and welcome to College Place United Methodist Church Worship Outdoors today. We're glad that you're worshiping with us. Um, we are outside and if you know the governor has said we can take our mask off if we're distant from it to others and if we are not in a crowd. But we ask you to leave your mask on if you're going to sing this morning because we're going to sing together. But then during communion you can always obviously have to take your mask off because we're going to have communion. So. Be, be careful and safe around each other, and uh, just know we'd love for you to sing with us, but please have your mask on while we do that just to be safe this morning. As I say that, I invite you to stand and sing our opening song. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Stands alone, we'll stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Back to the game. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, we'll stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. You may be seated. Let us join together in our opening prayer printed in the bulletin. God of life, your risen son has gathered us into the church nourish us with his body and blood and pour us out upon us your holy spirit grant that we may receive the blessing of your grace so that we may love you with all our hearts and share your love with all we meet in christ's name we pray amen the first reading is from the new testament is first john chapter 4 verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this, his love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify to the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have the boldest on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. 
but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they do not see. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. You're invited, if you're able, and choose to do so, to stand for the reading of our gospel. It's John 15, 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that prunes, bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in you, in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. But if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. What a great morning to be outside. People were worried about everything. Cold, too cold, too rainy, too... Well, it's North Carolina, so this is pollen season. So y'all might be wise to wear your mask for a bit longer, but with the governor's uh, new changes and advisement, and kind of right now we're kind of up to you. Uh, we'll serve communion. We'll, we'll actually, just so you'll know what's happening, um, Robert and I will be carrying around, we've got little individual cups, they've got two layers in there, one's the top little layer of plastic, and there's a piece of bread, we'll open those together, once you, everybody's been served, we'll open those together, uh, and then receive the bread at one time, and then you pull another layer of the little cup off, and there's grape juice, and then we'll join that together as part of our unity uh, in celebrating that. It's a little bit different, and we'll serve you where you are to keep you from moving around, and we'll wear masks and do hand sanitizer and all that stuff before we do that. So. Um, I never in my wildest dreams would have thought we would go a year without communion. Uh, it's technically in violation of the Book of Discipline, uh, so you should always have a uh, at least once a quarter. Uh, so, But I think we can make an argument during a pandemic it was safer not to do it. Um, so, But now that things are getting better, we're looking forward to that. And what a great day to be able to, to come together and to hear about the connection of the vine. Jesus is the Christ as the vine together. I thought about that, that, you know, being connected during this pandemic has been unusual. And we've been in different places, in different houses, and thank goodness to technology, we've been able to, to get together over computers and Zoom and over cell phones and telephones. It's just amazing uh, how we can do that and still remain connected. And yet, still we seem to part one from another. But through God's Spirit, through the gift of the Spirit, we know that we're all connected, inter interconnected through the love and through the grace of Christ. So in that we find comfort and connection. Part of the, uh, this is always, you know, as kind of the gardener in me loves this passage. You know, I, I hate when the season changes, especially the day you have to pull up the pansies that have finally started to grow and get really pretty so that you can start putting in marigolds and uh, uh, those uh, geraniums and all that fun stuff that makes summer come alive even in the midst of the heat. But it's kind of hard to pull off those, those vines. There are other places where there's roses that have become kind of long and lanky and yet we know that trimming those back, cutting off a bunch of that, sometimes throwing a whole arm load of 
rose clippings into the fire or into the can for, for disposal, it, it looks like that poor little bush has been cut to death and what happens to it, it comes back even stronger. My grandparents growing up, they had a, a great uh, uh, yellow bell or forsythia that was there on the side of the driveway and that thing had been there, oh, forever. It was as big as a car, maybe bigger. And so they decided that they were going to cut it back a little bit. Well, Grandpa didn't, didn't have a governor when it came to trimming bushes. Grandma never would let him actually cut much, and then so you know how that goes. But anyway, so Grandpa took that on and wound up cutting it. It wound up being about six inches tall off the ground. I mean, you know, that would be kind of a shock. You go in and you're used to seeing a yellow bell bush that's the size of a car, and then it's six inches off the ground, and that's it, and about maybe, you know, ten inches wide. But you know, after a couple of years, that bush was even prettier. It bloomed stronger. The branches were, were, were bigger. You know, it does make a difference in gardening, and gardeners know that. In the Hebrew culture and Jesus' people that he was telling this story to, they grew on a farm, they, they lived in vineyards, they understood vines far better than what we do, probably for the most part. And, and so they could connect, they understood that. And the very idea that God is the vine dresser adds even a whole other layer of understanding that the true gardener doesn't let the garden go completely wild but begins to nurture and cut and trim and shape. I'm always amazed when I go to places, I don't know, uh, uh, I think the Senior Botanical Gardens over in Kernersville, if you haven't been over there, it's, it's worth a ride and it's outside, you can just walk around and look. And they're beginning to train these long vines to go up poles and around and over uh, forms that they've made for them. It just amazes me. There's a cool one at the garden shop. I really want one. It's a type of pine. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And the way they trim them, it, it goes up a, a tall pole. And people, they just kind of wiggle it back and forth. And it looks like a curvy mountain road up this pole. And it's been taped. And it just keeps going and going and going. I don't know how far that poor tree would go. But to be able to be shaped and nurtured and grown into that new way. Perhaps that's partly what's fitting for us to hear. I hate holly. I mean ivy, not holly. Well, holly's okay, but ivy. There's some coming over there, the the uh, over there by Dan's foot. Watch out! It'll probably get your foot wrapped around it before the end of the the service. The way ivy grows this time of year. But Ivy, that, I remember it, this little dogwood. See, I love having this outdoor illustration for this. I, I plan this all perfect purposely. Uh, that, that little dogwood several years ago, the ivy had gone all the way up to the top of it. And if you look around on it, I think the root's still there. About, the, the ivy had grown about, you know, three or four inches across. And so ivy, the best way to cut it and trim it out of a tree is, you know, take a hunk out of it, an inch or so, so it can't grow back together. If you just cut it one time, it'll grow back together. There's a place on the old creek myrtle around here where I got to trimming one time with a chainsaw. It was a branch. I brought a little chainsaw, trimmed it up. I wound up taking a hunk out of it on the branch I wanted to leave. So I just cut a little replacement and cut it about as close as I could and jammed it in that space. Dern tree just took that piece on and it's just filled it back in. Branches as strong as I guess it was any other place. But but on that little ivy that had grown up that little dogwood tree there, cut a hunk out of it and and you know, it still the ivy kept living. And I couldn't figure out why in the world. And then on the back side of the tree where I really hadn't paid much attention, there were some other shoots that were smaller. And I figured out that those little branches, even in the midst of that, were keeping that whole big part of that ivy alive. So I took my little saw and cut a little hunk out of those, and you wouldn't believe it, just a little bit of time, that ivy began to die away. That's kind of how it is. I mean, the vines can be a good thing, a good illustration. And part of uh, being a vine, part of being connected to the vine, thinking about a vine, is to be nurtured in unusual ways and sustained other ways when it becomes detrimental and claustrophobic that it can take out a tree and kill it off. And yet this image is the vine dresser that Jesus talks about 
Christ, God working through and taking off just enough. Sometime even cutting it back pretty severe. And yet in the midst of that, the fruit improves. You know, the fruits, uh, we think of Paul's uh, fruits of the Spirit that are mentioned in Galatians. But at the same time, in John, there's a different type of fruit. And for John's Gospel, part of the fruit of the Gospel is to share the Gospel with all the world. That's part of what's meaning there. And you know, some of you have heard me say this before. It's attributed sometimes to St. Francis to preach the Gospel always, to use words when necessary. Our lives show forth the Christ in our presence and in our midst. The way we handle situations, sometimes we get it perfect. Sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we have to back up and punt and say we're sorry and move forward again. To be rebuild relationships, to begin to trim again into friendships and to be able to work forward. Those are all part of what it means to be grow in faith and understanding. But the very idea that, that Christ is there, that God is the vine dresser, that through nurturing, and sustaining, and trimming our lives, we begin to shape it more and more like the way of Christ, to model our lives after Christ, to love and compassion, and kindness and caring, to offer mercy to those that sometimes don't deserve it, to offer grace to others who completely share a, 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 an affection one with another and to care and nurture. Those, those are parts of life and part of what it means to be Christian and to grow in faith. Today I'm overly glad that we're able to celebrate communion together. For all of us, the communion is one of the things that connects us once again to Christ. That in the very first walk to Emmaus, those stories of after the resurrection and during the Easter season, when Christ appeared before the disciples, part of the way that they knew that it was Christ was the breaking of bread the sharing of the cup. They knew that He was in their presence through that. So as we celebrate that today, we do remember and we do celebrate the very fact that Christ is in our presence. Christ is with us. Christ connects us. And Christ will forever be with us. All glory, honor, and power be to the one who was, who is, and who is to come. I have to say, just before we start communion, the roses are from here from the church uh, on the side and all that. So I um, pulled those this morning and thought that would be a great way to, to remember uh, those who've come before and celebrate that and to be a part of that and to add beauty of God's creation as a reminder. For our invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with God and one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll invite you to pray silently. Hear the good news. Christ died for us who are yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. There, uh, in your bulletin, there are a few uh, inserts. We, we kind of split those. If you didn't get an insert, we'll get you one, and you can find out more information about it. But blankets in, Ma in May... 
uh, next Sunday especially is our Mother's Day offering uh, that's for church world service uh, we will take up the offering of those the blankets are each ten dollars a piece and go throughout the world to alleviate uh, devastation and distress um, to be able to help other people so we continue to work on that do you have some other announcements or oh yeah Brian does have an announcement Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very good morning this morning. I really like that saying. Uh, preach the gospel always, use words when necessary. And certainly I think the last year has been unprecedented. And I think it's been a trying time for all of us to come together at a time when we couldn't come together physically. And I think everyone here and everyone hopefully watching has played some part in that. Some large, but everyone playing something. But I think we can all agree that Jason has been instrumental in that. And that where I'm sure many churches have struggled over the last year, we are able to be here today. And we look forward to being here next week. And we look forward to being here for some time to come. And that is why it is with earnest, honest, and overwhelming pleasure that I would like to announce that um, the Northern Piedmont District for... Uh, the United Methodist Church has announced that he's stuck with us for one more year. So glad we're stuck with Jason another year. Now you know how it feels. You're getting to know how it feels to be stuck with him for like 20 some. Um, I did have an announcement that we have Tai Chi on Tuesday. It's on Zoom. There's an announcement in the newsletter, and you can email me, rbrewer at collegeplace.umc.com. Um, email me, and we'll give you a link for that. Uh, Marlis leads us. I have a little devotion. It's like 30 minutes of our, our wonderful time to have meditation, devotion, and some movement and Tai Chi. So if you're interested, uh, talk to me. Um, we also have a Native American Sunday giving offering. If you want to give to that, you may do that to give to the church office. Um, and also, um, if you'd like to give uh, to uh, Emily Stratterfield, who's having a child, we're giving her a gift as well. I think there's still some time to give for that. Yeah, there can be. <laughs> there still is time for that. So thank you. Actually, if... Uh got her card in the gift yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I purchased her card yesterday and it is hanging in my card, uh, my car. Um, so after the service, if you would like to sign the card uh, for her, uh, I'll be happy to go and retrieve it really quickly and we can um, put a pen over there and you can sign it if you wish. Um, that'll be a nice thing. Um, I, I want to say uh, thanks for, um, I'm good, I think I got it. Um, thank you for receiving me back uh, for my 11th year. I bless your hearts. Y'all are tough people. Um, I'm, I'm very fortunate and glad and uh, I, Today across Western North Carolina, uh, appointments are made and, and announced, and so we pray for other congregations, especially those that are experiencing a transition, uh, and also those who are receiving a clergy person back they may not want. Uh, and so we remember them, and we remember clergy people as they go to appointments that they may not be so excited about. We remember them as well. Uh, but other uh, happy transitions and retirements and all those things. Uh, and that's part of the beauty of Methodism uh, in its own way. Um, we did put the uh, offering uh, container over at the table. Uh, so if you would like to uh, offer uh, to God your resources, uh, if you brought those with you, of course you can give online. Uh, via the church website or just put a stamp on it and send it to the office and uh, we will be happy to receive it that way or you can drop it by the end of the week. Let us pray to God uh, for thanksgiving for all that we've been given. Gracious God, we do give you thanks for the many ways that you've blessed us and you care for us. 
we give you thanks, oh God, that uh, we are beginning to move forward into the world of pandemic, but we are mindful of still continued families that mourn and are experiencing sickness, and we pray for healing. We especially pray, oh God, for India and its rise of the pandemic. Uh, and throughout the world where vaccines are not as readily accessible uh, to others uh, as they have been. And people who are hesitant about vaccines, we pray, O oh God, for a calming of their spirit and wisdom uh, to uh, fall upon them that they may know uh, the presence of you and your guidance and the care of modern science. We ask, O oh God, for you to continue to nurture this church and all churches, especially the Methodist churches across Western North Carolina, as they receive news of their pastoral appointment beginning in July. And we give you thanks, O oh God, for the many gifts that you have given to us as individuals and help us to trust you with the gifts of the, uh, to support and to lift up your kingdom. Be with us, O oh God, as we move forward through life. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 together in the great thanksgiving the lord be with you, and also with you. lift up your hearts lift them up to the lord. let us give thanks to the lord our god it is, right our and it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you almighty god creator of heaven and earth you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit 
when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take us off. So we remove the little top layer there. Small little wafer that's on the top there. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Let us join together as God's people to receive the body. And then we've got the grape juice. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ.
Let us join together in our prayer at Halloween Communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Pray that we may go to the world of the ministry of your spirit and to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's we'll ask you to mask on, let us stand together, and we'll sing our final hymn. God be the Lord. Spirit's gift to us in the renewing of your hearts and minds and souls. May you go forth into the world in strength and as God's people to love and serve God in all that you do. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. Go in peace. No, thank you. Thank you.